Did you not shave this morning? I as didn't. We, as Oops. we watch your whiskers fade in on this 11th of April, you yeah, didn't shave. I gotta, I gotta watch it. You got you have a beard, uh, a much thicker beard, I think, than I do because uh, you, you remind me of Orel. This is the third day of my, Orel, my maternal grandfather. Uh, you needed a lawnmower to 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 get, <laughs> get that thing off. He used to use electric shave. Oh and, my uh, God, we Phillips. use electric. <laughs> yeah, and a Phillips. <clears throat> Poor Odell, I miss him. Oh dear. On for years. How uh, are you this morning? You okay? I'm doing okay. Holy Hello. Saturday! Holy Saturday! It's the eleventh. I got a pile of stuff here for you, so oh, I don't good, know. Oh, because I don't, I don't have much. Oh, shall I go just, first then? Yeah, you go ahead. You're having your coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. No politics, uh, no germs, no viruses this morning. I figured I'd go into another direction here. Okay. And uh, I, first of all, let me go ah. back here. This is my stepdaughter, Kelly. We, to Isn't we talked about beautiful? her yesterday. I kept calling her. She thinks this is really funny. I kept calling her my daughter-in-law. She's not my daughter-in-law. She is my stepdaughter. So an example of how my brain does not function properly sometimes. God bless you, Kelly. Yeah, that's why you, you have me around, just to give me shit. She looks lovely. She's a lovely girl. We love you, Kelly. And my yeah. wife uh, my wife was very impressed with how uh, smart and lovely that young lady is but she'd also like to see elliot sometime too a little closer oh up. yes of course this is elliot i've got we've got tons of photographs of elliot i'll have one up there for uh, several for you tomorrow elliot's about okay. 14 years old he's uh, he's our pet now uh a demonstration of how my brain more or less functions when it is functioning we were talking about peanut butter a couple of days ago and I mentioned Jif, and Jif yep. is made by an American company called Smuckers. Yep. And, of course, you recognized the voice of Smuckers, and here he, he is, is, Mason Adams. Yep. With a name like Smuckers, it's got to be good, right? And that is a, that is a photograph from a young, uh, Lou Grant. I believe so. He played the he boss plays his the boss, Grant yeah. show. I found this. Now, this goes back to the days when people used to sing about cigarettes. And this is a Chesterfield commercial, and you'll watch a young Mason Adams swing in here with a butt Holy talking about mackerel. Chesterfield, about how terrific they are, and wait for the tagline, something to do with 21 uh, blends of tobacco that need no filtering. There we go. Tobacco's too mild to filter. Uh, quite something. Oh, it said piss, but it said miss. I was going to yeah. even get, oh, my so that, I don't know how far back this goes. There's no data on this, but I was quite uh, intrigued to see that. Now, as I was watching this, my also, brain... Also, look at it. It's it's almost a minute long. Commercials yeah. were a minute yeah. long. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of singing and people waving cigarettes around and uh, guys looking longingly at the girl. And there we go. Well, she... <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. 20 wonderful smokes. Uh, and then my brain brought me back to this country, and I came across this piece written by a young June Colwood in March of 1956. This was about a month before I was born. Guess whom she was writing about? Uh, Joel Aldred. Exactly. Joel Aldred. Wow. Progressive uh, conservative, too. Yes, he ran and lost, I believe, but I recall I went back and studied my history, and he and Ted Rogers of the Rogers uh, Cell and Cable Company, communications company, founded CFTO in Toronto, oh. which which essentially became the head end of the CTV network eventually. So this Your goes back license to print long. money. Absolutely. So that's Joel Aldred. Now. My brain Didn't went. We do not to Maurier. No, that was uh, yes. Fred. Uh, oh, okay. Did, did he not Maurier? do? I could not find any video of, of Joel, but I'm, I'll keep looking. My brain then went back to peanut butter, went back to this brand for some reason, and then it brought me to another story. This is a, more of a tragic story, and tell me if you even remember this. Uh, New York Times, broadcaster dies waiting for heart. This was published... 1974. 1974. This was... Oh, again. Bruce Marsh! You're My right. 
Bruce Goodness, Kraft, Kraft, the voiceover for Kraft uh, recipes. You're very, you're very good, my friend, because I was 18 in 74. Around that time, I was preparing to leave for, uh, well, not quite then in March, but I was actually turning 18 a month later and preparing to go to university at Carleton University in Ottawa to study journalism. And I'd been doing radio already for a couple of years, started when I was 16, roughly, and had been following a lot of these people, a lot of these broadcasters that I was uh, very fond of, and this story about Bruce Marsh. I'll make it quick. I've forgotten but... this story completely. I forgot the tragic end of yeah. Bruce Marsh, who had a great voice. What traveled, a voice. Traveled to Los Angeles. He was, he, had, he was set up in an apartment in Palo Alto, he was waiting for a heart transplant because he had heart problems. Uh, and uh, he died after suffering a heart attack. And they found, tragically, a, a, a suitable donor for him about an hour later or an hour after oh. they discovered his body. It was quite some, some sad story. And he was only 48 when he died in, in Los Angeles. So, And this appeared did, in the I, New York I Times. Did not, I did not know this ending at all about yeah, him. I remember hearing that now many, many years ago, and it just came flooding back to me yesterday as I was looking at this. And Bruce Marsh, as you well stated, was uh, the voice of the Kraft commercials. This is not a Bruce Marsh one, and I'll explain oh, why in a second. Gelatinous. That's French, oh. French dressing that is used in this case to make a stew. So you put in your, you brown your meat, you put in some craft <laughs> French dressing. That color. Yeah. And that, that, that uh, traffic cone orange dressing with all due respect to our friends at Kraft at, on Devonshire here where, where they, I think they still make the dressings in TMR. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, anyway, and this, but I'm going to post this link to this video because the voice here is another Canadian uh, VO guy whose name I've blanked on entirely. And I'm sure somebody out there can identify him. Perhaps it's, you it's can It's not too. Bruce then. It is not Bruce. This was recorded in 75. Oh, okay. Uh, after he died. Which is about the, but perhaps a year after he died. And they're giving away a 1975 Ford, whatever it is there with the, with the, oh, bot, the fair with lane the, wagon. Yeah. That's right. So. Fairmont. But, uh, a fair, yeah, a Fairmont. That's right, a Ford Fairmont. But again, the voice here, you will recognize, I'm sure. I, I recognize the voice, but I, I just can't pin down the name, but I'll post that. Now, is this, this brought, a Canadian one or an American yes, one? Yes, this is a Canadian one. Anyway. This brought me to our buddy here, Joe Settlemeyer. You and I talked about, and I'll make this quick because there's so much material. Since we spoke about him, you and I, two or three years ago, he's put up his own website. He's at Settlemeyer.com, S-E-D-E-L-M-A-I-E-R.com. Joe's and still he, around? He is. And yeah. uh, there's a link to a 60 Minutes interview. There's also a link to a piece writ that was done by the CBC in 1986 on the journal featuring a rather taciturn-looking uh, Barbara Frum. Oh, my God, the journal. Yeah. The journal. I don't remember this guy's name, though. Oh, I, I, no, I can't think of him. I recognize him, but I can't think of who he is. He basically introduced stuff. It was Cameron. No, that, that was Bill Cameron. But anyway. Anyway, you'll see. Uh, I, I'm not going to play the whole piece, but there's, there's the lovely Barbara looking not, not terribly joyful about Joe Settlemeyer. But anyway, he's got all of this business on uh, his site. But I will show you some of the uh, bits some of my favorite bits. <laughs> and now, if you want to see original Settlemeyer uh, material in very high quality, because his videos are um, stored uh, on the Vimeo system, and they've mastered them very well, and the audio is terrific. And I'll show you, I'll give you an example of one. I'm not going to play them all, obviously. They're little pieces of art, you know. They really Absolute are. Absolutely astounding. Now, here's one. This is about a 20-second spot. And... Look at if you, if you look at the background, there's a there's a there are people in the foreground, and the gag here is how many seconds does it take to change the the attachments on this John Deere lawnmower? So this guy will then will blow a whistle in a moment. There's a neighbor who's looking in, but at the back, <laughs> but at the back you can see there's a guy looking through the window, and then oh, there's also his that. wife. You see, they're all in the background there. Now watch what this. And he's looking straight at the camera, and you'll watch he kind of jumps between every single bit that he does. And at the end, I'll let it go, you'll see a guy walking into frame for about a second from stage right, and then they go to black. It's just, it's quite funny. So there he goes. 
So change the thing, and then he jumps up. There you go. The guy's looking over here. Very good. <laughs> That's the guy. That's the guy walking in the frame. It's a home movie. <laughs> Uh, the guy walking in the frame at the end, that's just howlingly funny. Now, I always love that stuff where there are people looking in a window, just happen to be, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. serendipity staring in a window. Something a great cartoonists always have that as a. This is, this is your favorite one the guy who gets up and uh, he goes to the office with the, with the <laughs> secretary typing the letter. This is the one here. He gets up and the, the faces he, that he would hire for these things. <laughs> it is right. Wrong. It's just that he shakes the thing and going, oh, God, it's another day, and I'm off again. Oh, Ford must geez. love that sad. The dog <laughs> biting his leg. Temporarily is misspelled. <laughs> yeah. And they should the, the type that now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> what a great face. What a great face. Everyone has, looks like Khrushchev in these things. Absolutely. Positively has to be there. <laughs> oh, up those yeah, it's just—it's oh. so much fun. Now, oh, the what journal, an imagination. Uh, the CBC Journal piece was about a, uh, a two or three spots that they had Settlemeyer do for the Canadian market because they were selling Owen, Owens Corning fiberglass pink insulation. Remember seeing those? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you look at this one, this is my favorite of the three. Of course, the house is about 10 feet wide, and they're, they're all stuck in there. Oh, I remember this one. Now I remember, yeah. now I remember it. Yeah, so if you look at this, but <laughs> of course, they're all coming in. And again, you look at this, This is and it's typically American because you'd never see two little Canadian flags kind of no. quite arranged this way anywhere, right? But the now, uh, through the door. yeah, look, but look closely. You've got the kid and you'll watch the kid opening and closing the door about three times. And then off to stage right, you'll see a guy with a pair of binoculars just looking in. But he's also, <laughs> he's also, he's also far in the distance. And of course, <laughs> and of course, he's going to have him standing behind the column eventually and not looking directly into the camera. Watch this. <laughs> Opens the door, closes the door. Oh my god, oh, look at oh and the, yeah. with the 53 mercury. Yeah. Look at the guy with the, with the, with the <laughs> You know, bad family. Oh yeah, playing okay. And she closes the gate. Right. So. <laughs> with the tie. Yeah, that those <laughs> everybody that <laughs> guy's one. I don't know if it it sold any of this crap, but it, my think, God, they were entertaining. They were anyways, better at the programs they interrupted. Yeah, so that it was quite a phenomenon. So the the piece uh -huh. from the from the journal is about that. It's about the corporate approval of these various bits, and of course, you remember the Clara Peller ones with "Where's the Beef?" Oh, I'm not going to yes. play this whole thing, and uh, it's look, it's a very large bun, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, I mean, these people are long Charles gone, House. but that was a I whole mean, other. <laughs> and uh, there's one more that I wanted to show you. <clears throat> Where what is it? What about the monograph of the guy, the guy getting the, the, the calendar, but can't get along? Oh, that's Charles what I was going to get at. Yes. Not all of Settlemeyer's uh, pieces are on the website here. Uh, perhaps because either, I don't know if it's a technical situation or uh, uh, the, a matter of getting the <laughs> getting the rights approved or whatever but this is this is oh. one of my favorite spots this is the one for gmac which was used to be general motors acceptance corporation where they right. gm had its own lending arm it's it's been spun off it's long gone now but this is in the early days <laughs> for the web and if you and it's about a guy who goes into a ba an automated bank. Now, this is way before the CGI technology we have these days. So you see these monitors, the the image of of Leona. Uh, oh God, you remember her name? Oh yes, and uh, I'm here for a car loan. I'm here for a car loan, Leona. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, he's he's talking into the microphone. <laughs> he's he's trying to tap into a keypad, and it's just not working. And Leona keeps skipping a beat and going back and then at the end my favorite bit is when the security guard comes in and starts distributing the uh the calendars and i'm just oh, on the floor. under his arm right 
And I help you with a student loan. Yeah, Carl, Carl don't pay him the promise. <laughs> Doesn't he stamp his foot? Yeah, watch him stamp his foot. <laughs> Oh, they're better than the cars they made in those days. Charles Krause. <laughs> Krause. Charles Krause. Charles Krause. 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 <laughs> they're, they're, they're... Oh, golly. Oh, and the security guard would like to count. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice calendar. Oh, God, oh. those were good. That is just. Anyway, that that gave me. I was in my office yesterday alone, just howling. Watching these things, yeah. Oh, I mean, my. there's nothing funnier than a damn good commercial. Oh god, and that was so. <laughs> that was so funny. I and I stole unashamedly from Settlemeyer. Uh, I'm going to try to have to dig up a piece. I'll I'll tell you the story quickly. I remember doing this. I went to uh, a, a, a kite manufacturing company in, in Montreal. <clears throat> with uh, the lovely and talented Anna Asimakopoulos at the time. She was producing the piece. And I had somebody in the foreground speaking straight to camera, doing his, his, his interview, and I was in the background fighting with a kite. <laughs> no, I don't way, remember that. Way in the background. And I, and I, and I stole that from, from Woody <laughs> Allen and Settlemeyer because that kind of stuff just made me scream. Uh, and if you ever... And I, I also... Uh, flashed on this idea. If you've never seen Zelig, which is the movie by uh, by Woody Allen, you ha and again, if you like that kind of effect where you have these long shots, everywhere, right? yeah, you've got these long shots, and there's something in the background somewhere, kind of jiggling, and you see a fight breaks out or something. <laughs> yeah. God, that made me laugh. Yeah, the, so. you just incidental stuff in the back. Well, wasn't there another one you did? Where the guy was the a uh, uh, security guard ends up picking up a a, a, a fire uh, extinguisher yes. and just walking off with it. That's right. It was it was they were auctioning off uh, stuff from Expo sixty seven, and they had all these artifacts. And then uh, I I was I had begun bidding on a on a fire extinguisher, and I, I, <laughs> I had to again. I I, I had. <laughs> Inspired by that Settlemeyer approach, where you get the, the just the average mokes who were there, and you you talk, to, you recruit them to play a part in these in these pieces, you know. And uh, anyway, that's really worth a look if you want to laugh. And again, a lot of these go back thirty years, way before a lot yeah, of the technology we have at hand now is available. And uh, and you see him in some of the documentary material where he's sitting there with with an average guy, and he's saying no. I just want you to look into camera and say, I just stepped in it. And that's all you have to say. <laughs> and, and, and don't smile, you know? So. And there's nothing funnier than a real face of a real person. He had a genius for picking out average Joes. One of the lines from, I think, from the PBS documentary, he said, uh, back in the day, uh, people would refer to the people he would put in his spots as, quote, the uglies, unquote. And he said, what do you mean the uglies? These are regular people that you see on the street and around you every day. You every know, day. these are real people. Yeah. Well, the one you were showing about uh, the FedEx guy, uh, I, you, there are each 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 part of it is a gorgeous little vignette. Just when he gets out, gets out of bed. The, the, his wife lying next to him with the hair yeah, dryer. Yeah. Not saying a word. Not saying a word, right? <laughs> it's out cold. And you'll see a lot of oh. the same faces uh, in in a lot of the spots. A lot of the same faces come back to yeah. because he went back to, to recruit the people. And we didn't even cover off on the fast talking FedEx guy who was on the phone who made a who made a career oh, out of that made, fast made, yeah. talking. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, they, that's he, my. He used him in a couple of them, right? Yeah, he was in several, yes. And again, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. <clears throat> yeah. And and then there's the other one where it's the step up the corporate ladder with this has to be in, in Fresno tomorrow, Johnson. Yeah. And, you, you know, yeah. you, you look at Johnson and he's yeah. sitting there like this, you know, it's not on the plane yet. Yeah. Very funny. I, I, I I, you know, you you remember the ads. I don't know if you necessarily buy the product of any kind, but Volkswagen used to do tremendous Absolutely commercials. Absolutely, too. Yes. Honda, uh, and I don't know if you uh, got the E Trade with the baby, with the that's when they had. Computer I remember generated. that vaguely now. Yes, but there's also uh, of late, 
the Geico commercials are also oh. nice and weird too. With and the gecko. Uh, yeah. There's another <laughs> one, uh, Progressive Insurance, with that woman, the actress there, whom I don't, whose name I I don't know. Yes. Some of Very, them have been oh. good. Yeah. And, and then and one that's on. Uh, the, 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 she's talking to Bigfoot or something like that. And she said, uh, and they call you Bigfoot. He looks at his foot and he says, but my name's Kyle or something like that. <laughs> Whatever it is. I, that sense of nut, nuttiness is yeah. just, uh, I, it always, always gets me. And I, anyway, I, I've I, taken up I'd like to meet here. the people. Oh, don't worry about it. The stuff I have wasn't uh, worth, I can use it tomorrow. I just have one quick thing to say. It's the only political thing I'll say. I watched Bernie Sanders last night, interviewed on PBS. I thought he did a wonderful job. I gave him a bit of a hard time yesterday. Uh, I still think some of it is deserved, but he is actually showing some statement statesmanship, which actually I will say heretofore has been absent. And uh, he was very, very good, very, very solicited, uh, solicitous. And uh, I, I, I admire him. I admire, okay. I admire the performance he gave uh, yesterday on PBS. So you, you can changed, watch it. You changed your tune a little bit. Have you changed your... your I, I your, have. Forgive your fusil, me. Your fusil d'épaule. Well, you know, changé the, votre fusil it, it is the healthy mind that can change Absolutely. or the warp mind. Absolutely. I, I, I was, you were rather perfunctory about it yesterday, but uh, I, I'm more on your side today now. I'm more of your... That's the way I view things too, because we have to see the glasses half full at this point. And uh... yeah, no, and and Bernie <clears throat> Bernie managed to move the barometer or the uh, the spectrum to the left by American standards, and for that, I think a lot of Americans should be thankful to him. Yeah, I I agree. Healthcare and so forth. So uh, demain, joyeux pack. We'll joyeux pack. Uh, Going to do a, an Easter edition. Sure, if you're up for it. Uh, joyeux oh, yeah. Pâques à tout le monde. Joyeux Pâques juive aussi uh, à tout le monde. Ben, et, uh, tous et toutes. And uh, there right. we are. Sunset tonight is the fourth, the start of the fourth day of, uh, of, of Pâques, Passover. Of Passover, okay. Donc la Pâques juive. All right then. So we'll see you Off demain. You and yeah. uh, and uh, try, try, try to shave if you can. I better. I know. Was, I knew I was going to get hell from you. Oh, and I'm I got no, 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 no. And I got my little notice there. My head shaving device should be in the mail. Should be delivered next week. So okay. And I've got that coffee filter coming from that Quebec City. So, <laughs> that, that'll that, that'll give something to. It looks like Telly Savalas. Look forward to. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Take yeah. it easy. Tomorrow.